Now we're going to look at a sequencing example. So before we do that, here's a question about handling branches. What do we need to update or change in the processor in order to take a branch? Which one of the registers needs to be changed? Well, the answer is the program counter. If we take a branch, we need to put the new address of the branch in the program counter so that we know which instruction to fetch from memory to go down the right control path. So now let's take a look at an example. Here's a program. We have a branch not equal, R0, R1. Here are R0 and R1. And we're going to branch down to here if they are equal or down to here if they're not equal. And let's take a look at how this executes. So here's our instruction. We load it into our instruction register. Now we're going to decode it. So in order to decode it, the ALU is going to decide if R0 and R1 are equal. And the way it does that is with a subtraction. It's going to subtract R0 and R1 and find out if they're equal. Now if they're equal, when we subtract them, the result will be 0. If they're not equal, it'll be non-zero. Here they're not equal. So the ALU says they're not zero, which means they're not equal. Now this result tells the control whether to branch. So this is branch if not equal. They're not equal. So the control is now going to tell the program counter to go on to the right instruction. So the branch is taken, and now the control needs to tell the program counter to go on to the right place. So where does the right place? Well, it's the current program location plus this 3. But what is this 3? Well, this 3 says go 3 instructions ahead. So we need to be a little careful here, because that translates into 3 times 4 bytes, because each instruction is 4 bytes. So if we want to go 3 instructions ahead, we need to go ahead 3 times 4 bytes. So we're going to put in this constant as 3 times 4. And then we're also going to do one other thing here. We're also going to add 4, because we always add 4 to go on to the next instruction. So how do we calculate the final branch address? Well, we take this 3 from the instruction. That's 3 instructions, so we multiply by 4 to get the number of bytes. And then we add 4, because we always go on to the next instruction. And so this is going to tell us how far ahead to go to the next address. So in this case, this is going to be 16, and it's going to go on to the next instruction. So the key things for this instruction were branches use the ALU to do a subtraction. They subtract two register files, and depending on whether the result is zero or not zero, that tells the control whether you take the branch or not. If you take the branch, you use the offset, the number of instructions that you're going to go in the branch, and you convert that into instruction words in the program counter, and you go on to load the next instruction. This is a little different for unconditional jumps. For a jump, you just replace the value of the program counter, because it's not an offset. We will learn all about the details of this when we talk about instruction codings in the next lecture. So here's a question about if-then-else. Why did we need an unconditional jump and a conditional branch to do the if-then-else? Well, the reason for this is we always need to jump over the else part if we do the if part. So here's the if part. So if we're going to do the if part, we need to use the unconditional branch to skip the else part. And we need the conditional branch here to decide whether we should do the if part or jump down to the else part. So we need both of them in order to make sure that if then else works. Question, how do we jump to a label done if R3 is equal to 7? Well, here's the answer over here. We need to take 7 and put it into another register, in this case R2, using an add immediate, and then we can compare the ones that we want here, register R3 and 2, because 2 now has 7 in it. Now we can compare if R3 is the same as 7 and branch to done. These other ones here don't quite work. So this instruction here is going to put 7 into R3. And that's a problem because then we're going to replace whatever value we had in there before. Jump done, well that will always jump regardless of what value R3 is. And this instruction here looks like it would be great, but there is no instruction like this in MIPS. There's no branch equal instruction that has a constant value for the comparison. So, remember that branch equal and branch not equal only compare registers and registers. So if we want to compare a register with a constant in a branch, we have to first load the constant into a register using addI, and then we have to compare the registers using branch not equal or branch equal.